Okay, welcome. My name is um, Deborah Greer, and I'd like to welcome you here today for the Women of the ENIAC presentation. Um, when I first read about these women, it was in the Wall Street Journal articles um, by Tom Petzinger, and I was just really fascinated by their story. So I looked a little further, and I found another article by um, W. Barclay Fritz, which was also very good. And then I got really interested in their story, and I just kept thinking it, it'd be so great to meet them and to hear their stories personally. Um, and then I thought, well, I bet there's a lot of other people at Microsoft that would also like to meet them and hear them. Um, so fortunately, I work for someone who also thought this was an exciting and um, worthwhile project and gave me the go-ahead to make it happen. Um, before I introduce my manager, though, I just wanted to tell a little bit about the format. Um, Dennis is going to come up and give a brief introduction, and then Jean and Kay are going to each give a short bio. And then Maureen will be posing questions as our moderator today to take them through a lot of the important questions that all of us want to hear answers to. And then at the end, there should be time for audience questions as well. Okay. And now I'd like to introduce to you to the Director of Product Development Services, Resources, <laughs> Dennis Schnabel. It's indeed an honor to be able to introduce our guest today, uh, uh, two of the original programmers from the ENIAC computer in the 1946. It's 50 years, and uh, it's, an, it's really mind-boggling sometimes to think about the changes that have happened in the computer industry over the last 50 years. Even in the 25 years that I've been in the computer industry, it's really incredible. Uh, I remember the mainframe computer I used back in graduate school filled up probably about a third of the size of this room and had special <laughs> air conditioning and had less uh, power and capacity than the uh, workstation I have on my desktop right now. So it's, it's, it's really amazing to see how much uh, change has happened. And, but for many of us, 50 years seems like a long time, but really in the span of a, any of the engineering professions, it's really a, a short period of time. And I thought I'd give you a couple examples of that. You take uh, civil engineering, for example, goes back thousands of years to the Romans building of the bridges and, and uh, roads and the Chinese building of the Great Wall of China. And mechanical engineering, <clears throat> the first piston engine was built in 1690. And it took another 79 years for James Watt to build the first steam engine in 1769. Another 61 years for the first railroad to be built in 1830 and another 55 years for the first car to be built by Carl Benz in 1885. Um, even electrical engineering, which is relatively young, also has had a long time span, really. Uh, the first condenser, the Leyden jar, was built in 1745, and it took 92 years for the first telegraph to be built in 1837, and another 40 years for the first electric light to be built in 1877. So you can see that Programming profession, software engineering, is really a very young profession, and we still have got uh, a lot to learn, a tremendous uh, amount to learn. But we owe a tremendous amount of debt to the two uh, women who are with us today because they were one of the first uh, pioneers of, of our original profession. And <clears throat> when they started build, uh, working on the ENIAC, it was classified. And so they didn't have access to the machine until their security clearances came through. And so the only thing they had was the logic diagrams to try to figure out how to make this machine work. And <clears throat> they had to uh, reconfigure the machine for every program. So they had to reshuffle cables, reset operational switches, and all sorts of things. That's real machine-level programming. <laughs> and. Um, a year later, in uh, 1947, the ENIAC was converted to the first stored program uh, computer. A uh, great deal of work, uh, uh, work by Gene to make that happen. And, um, but it was interesting to see that many of the same sorts of problems they dealt with, we still seem to deal with ourselves. For example, 
how to make the code run as fast and as efficient as possible, how to reuse the code as effectively as possible. I guess some of these problems just never seem to go away. So it's with um, that, I think it's, a, it's an incredible honor on my part to welcome uh, these two women to, uh, to Microsoft, uh, two of our original pioneers. And we have a great deal of uh, debt to, owe to them. And I'm really looking forward to hearing more about what they have to say. So welcome, Jean Bartek and Kay Moshley Antonelli. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to start off with some short bios um, of wh where they saw their careers and um, what they saw their contributions can be. Do you want to start? I'll be happy to, yeah. Please. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. Well, you can imagine uh, what it, how different it is today seeing your campus. As a matter of fact, I don't know if any of you know this, but I would say it looks like a very prosperous company. <laughs> <laughs> And certainly your, your working spaces, let me tell you, if I'd had anything like that, I can't imagine what I'd been able to do. Uh, but I, uh, and certainly, I want to say that I did not choose this career. I just feel that I was lucky in being at the right place at the right time. Uh, how could I have chosen a career that I didn't even know existed? And as a matter of fact, it didn't exist. Uh, until the ANIAC came along. So uh, anyway, I'm just incredibly grateful that I happened to be there at that time because for many reasons, but the biggest one that it was a lot of fun and it certainly affected the rest of my life in a very significant way. But I started out as a farm girl from Missouri. I'm the sixth of seven children and the third daughter. And so my mother had a, she had a cook and she had a housekeeper before I came along. So <laughs> being the third girl, I actually worked in the field and uh, plowed corn and uh, rode horses and put up hay and you know did all this kind of stuff. But at the, main, at the same time as women have forever, I had the help of housekeeping <laughs> despite doing that. Uh, so anyway, uh, I went off to college at the age of 16 in 1941. And when I started, I thought, well, I'll be a journalism major. And the reason I did, even though I was very good in math, I couldn't think of anything to do with math except teach school. And I didn't want to teach school. So I was, uh, I, I, and I'm sure that you can't imagine how isolated we were in comparison with how you were today. I read about all these exciting places, but I'd never been anywhere or seen any of it. So anyway, I went off to college and in 1941, of course, uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed and immediately all the men were swept away from the campus. And in the spring of uh, 42, it was almost like a girls' school because all the men were gone. But then the next year they brought in V2 and V5 programs and the V2 people uh, were men that had been at sea and we really thought it was really something those sailors that came in that had been out and seen the world uh, so anyway I took uh, my math courses uh, uh, trigonometry analytic geometry and physics with the these sailors now you have to understand that I was the only math major in school at this point, not just the only woman math major, the only <laughs> math major in that school. So anyway, uh, the courses then that were given uh, afterward, uh, I did have a guy from South America who was there going to school that took advanced calculus in some of these courses. But I had courses all by myself because the head of the department said, well, we offer the degree, and if we offer the degree, we have to offer the courses, and <laughs> therefore, we just give them. So that's what they did. I had courses all by myself. Well, anyway, <laughs> when it was time to, I, gra I finished my coursework at the end of 1944, so I was busy looking for a job, and I didn't want to teach school, and I was absolutely inundated 
because they were so desperate for math teachers in all the schools around. And, uh, but one of my teachers came in one day 